زينب تسيح دموعها وتصرخ يا جبريل بجناحك ارفع جثته لا تسحق الخير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سيدة زينب when she is born in the fifth or sixth year after Hijra with a few years between her and her brother Imam Hussein alayhi salam we are told that the Prophet of Islam sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi is not in Medina at the time and so her dear mother Az Zahra alayhi salam comes to Amir al-Mu'mineen and says look as the representative of the Prophet of Islam in his absence we ask you to name this child Amir al-Mu'mineen replies when my uh, brother my cousin, my senior, the Prophet of Islam, will come. He is the one that will name this child. This is the right of uh, the child's grandfather, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. So we are told that when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi enters into Medina al Munawwara and sees this beautiful child, he says, yes, I have a right to name this child as the grandfather and the father of this child. However, I leave this to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself will name this daughter. And as we are told, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then sends the revelation from Jibra'il saying, name this dear daughter Zainab, she who is the beautification of her father. The best qualities that you find in the father, these qualities are found in this daughter that beautifies her father and shows the zina of her father, Amir al-Mu'mini. Zainab, as we know, lives a life filled with tragedies. As we are aware, her grandfather Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi dies when she is just around six years of age. When she sees the death of the Prophet of Islam and the tragedies which take place afterwards, she sees the martyrdom of her mother, Zahra alayhi salam. We are told with regards to this that one day during the life of the Prophet of Islam, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, Sayyidah Zainab sees a dream. A dream of me and you may be something that has no meaning, is false, but the dream of these type of individuals, the pure, immaculate family of the Prophet of Islam, these dreams have wisdom and hikmah and meaning behind it. She says, I saw in my dream one night that there is a very strong wind and there's a very firm tree that is there and that as the wind is blowing me away, I hold on to the branches of this tree and suddenly this tree is uprooted and as I try to hold on to the branches, the branches also break and I find that there are two twigs left of this tree. When I hold on to these two twigs, eventually they also break and she says, I found myself left in the middle of the air about to fall, at which time then I woke up. Sayyidah Zainab says with tears in my eyes, I went to my grandfather Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. I said, Ya Rasulullah, what was this that I saw in my dream? The tree was there, it was being uprooted by the strong winds. I held on to two firm branches. Those branches also broke. Then I saw these two twigs that were there. I held on to them, they also broke. And then I was left without any support. The Prophet of Islam sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi has tears in his eyes. He says, Ya Zainab, that tree was me, your grandfather. And soon I'm about to leave this world. And as I leave this world, there will be those two branches that you will try to hold on to. And they are of your mother, Az Zahra, Sayyidina Sa'il Alameen, and your father, Amir al Mu'mineen. But a time will come when they will also be uh, martyred and they will leave this world. And then you will have those two smaller parts of the tree that were your brothers, Hassan and Hussein. But Zainab knew a time will come where even they are gone and you are left then without any supporter. So she was told about the tragedies that were to take place and she sees stage by stage the calamities that would befall her. Because if you look at all of these events that take place, there are some people that were present, others that weren't present. One of the individuals that sees all of the tragedies of Islam is Zainab. When the Prophet of Islam dies, she stays in Medina as we are told she then is married to the son of Ja'far Abdullah, who was a very wealthy person. Despite his wealth, history tells us that Abdullah was someone that was uh, very generous. And this was part of the household of Zainab that they would give a lot. And we are told that those that saw their lifestyle saw that they would live a very simple life. In fact, with regards to her modesty, we are told that the neighbors of the house 
of Zainab sallallahu alayha said never did we see her shadow and never did we hear her voice. In other words, the hijab of this lady was such that never would she come out of the house in front when there are other non-mahram people there and never would we hear her voice because of the hijab that she kept, the modesty that she would keep in her house. She lives in Medina and we are told that one time comes where Zainab sallallahu alayha then leaves and joins her father and joins her father in Kufa. History mentions how when she joins her father in Kufa, the few years that Amir Mu'mineen is the Khalif of the so-called Khalif of the Muslims during those three or four years, Amir Mu'mineen sends Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein alayhima, and says, look, go to Medina and bring for me Zainab, alayha, my daughter. I wish for her and Umm Kulthum and the other daughters to be with me here in Kufa. But when you travel with them, number one, travel at night time. Travel where no one can see them because these are the daughters of Ali bin Abi Talib. And also when you get to the gate of Kufa, stop. And I will come and welcome my daughter Zainab and Umm Kulthum to enter into the city. Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein travel at night time with the daughters of Ali bin Abi Talib. And as they travel, they get to the gate of the city. They stop there. Amir Mu'mineen himself comes out of the city, welcomes Zainab and Umm Kulthum. And there are lines which really break the heart of a believer when Amir Mu'mineen says, Ya Zainab, this is the market of Kufa. And Zainab, this is the, the main gate of Kufa. And this is the other way that you can enter. And this is the third way that you can enter. And this is uh, the government buildings of Kufa. Sayyidah Zainab says, Ya Abul Hassan, why do I need to know these things about where the market of Kufa is and where the gate of Kufa is? And even Abi Talib says, because this is the same Kufa where after I go, in that same dream that she sees. And after Hassan al-Mujtaba goes, and after her brother Hussein goes, this is that same Kufa where you will be made to work. At that moment in time then, during this middle part of her life, we see this character of Sayyidah Zainab, uh, of a teacher, of a jurist, of a mufassira of Quran. Because the narration says that on one occasion, Imam Hussein salam is passing by the Masjid of Kufa, and he can hear inside the Masjid, that Sayyidah Zainab is giving tafsir. The women, when Sayyidah Zainab enters into Kufa, the women of Kufa, they ask and request from Amir al-Mu'mineen that we have lessons for females, for women, women, with your daughter on tafsir of Quran. And so the history mentions that as Imam Hussein is passing by, he said, I would hear her mentioning the tafsir of the huruf al-muqatta'at, Yaseen, Alif, Lam, Mim. In Kufa, therefore, she has this role of the teacher. A time then comes when the Ahlul Bayt have to return back to Medina after the death of Amir al-Mu'mineen. And when in Medina then she lives her life, she sees the death of Al-Mushtaba As we are told, uh, when Amir al-Mu'mineen gave her hand in marriage to Abdullah ibn Ja'far, he said, I only have one request. The dowry was the same as the dowry of Zahra He says, my one request is that when her Brother Hussein requests her to come with him on a certain journey whenever, don't say no. This is my one request from you that whenever he requests, allow her to go with Hussein. These last few moments, then, when she is in Medina Tul Munawwara, as we understand, the greatest tragedy that has fallen on this earth takes place. And if we want to understand the martyrdom of Sayyidah Zainab, who after Karbala then cries and laments, if we want to understand the true martyrdom of this woman, then understand that there are two ways in which I can uh, make someone shaheed. The first is the way in which they make Imam Hussein salam shaheed. They sever his neck from his body. They physically kill him. The second way you can make someone a martyr or shaheed is the way in which you have fish in the water. Remove the fish from the water that itself is its shahada and its martyrdom. There's no need to cut or use any weapon, nothing. You just separate the fish from the water. The same thing takes place with Zainab on Ashura. If you want to see the actual martyrdom of Zainab on Ashura, both of these types of martyrdom are found. That when it came to Imam Hussein, this was the first type of martyrdom. And I said, when you remove a fish from its water, the fish dies when they separated Hussein and Zainab from one another. The day in which Hussein no longer lives and Zainab is separated, this is the real martyrdom of Zainab And then there are differences of opinion as to where she lives, where she goes after 
كربلاء عن عاشوراء she would mourn for Imam Hussein عليه السلام and as one narration says she is mourning in Sham uh, as we know there are different places as to where she is said to be buried she is mourning and crying for Hussein and the daughter of Hussein عليه السلام that is there until at one point she reaches uh, her final moments according to some narrations there is someone that uh, is there to kill her because he sees this is a woman from the Ahlul Bayt others say no she she died in a different way but one thing that we do understand about this lady of light Zainab, Zainab alayha, is she leaves for us something which is part of the treasure chest of Ahlul Bayt one of the jewels of these treasures of Ahlul Bayt if you look into the life of uh, Ayatollah Mar'ashi Najafi he mentions very famously in a famous incident that on one occasion the incident is long that he meets Sahib al-Asri was Zaman in Iraq when he meets Sahib al-Asr many things takes, take place one of the things that he says he says that my Imam told me to tell all of the Ummah to read three things in their life they should read these three things the first thing the Imam said they should read the khutbah of Shiq Shiqiyya of Amir al-Mu'mineen found in Nahj al-Balaq Amma wallah laqad taqammasaha fulan فَسَبَرْتُهُ فِي الْعَيْنِ قَضَى وَفِي الْحَلْقِ شَجَعَ شَقْ شَقِيَّ Of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Shaykh Shaqiyya literally means the foam that comes out of the mouth of the camel when the camel is angry. So this khutbah was like the expression of anger of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. This is the first. He said, then tell the people to read the khutbah of Az-Zahra alayhi salam of Fadak. And the third, he says, tell them to read the khutbah of Zainab Salamullah alayha that she gives in Sham. This was a legacy for us to understand the treasure of knowledge that was Sayyidah Zainab Salamullah alayha wa akhirul da'wan alhamdulillah rabbil alayhi.